Hello, my name is Preston, and I am a solutions engineer with the F5 Distributed Cloud team. The purpose of this video is to review our software-defined network capabilities and how it can overcome issues with IP overlap. Many engineering teams find themselves dealing with the challenge of working with subnet collision, especially through mergers and acquisitions, or dealing with various public and private cloud networking paradigms. And traditionally, solving these problems has involved complicated network address translation schemes that can be hard to troubleshoot. Because F5 Distributed Cloud is no mere cloud router, but rather a mesh of distributed proxies, Kubernetes hosts, and security and service policy enforcement points with the SaaS-based configuration console, we make configuring and operating with colliding subnets simple and easy, regardless of which public or private cloud environment you are operating. We accomplish this with a mesh of customer edge nodes that deploy inside your environments and participate with your existing underlay networks regardless of whether they are public or private cloud. Conceptually, we divide up our network components into site local inside, site local outside, and global networks with respect to their orientation on the customer edge. An inside network uses the customer edge node as its gateway, or at least its gateway to other services distributed throughout our service mesh. We can attach to one of the colliding subnets and treat it as an inside network. An outside network simply has access, direct or routable, to the internet, as well as the broader underlay network. A global network can be defined on a collection of sites that allows them to communicate with each other through an overlay mesh. Once we have our networks defined, we can leverage network connectors to govern exactly how each type of network can communicate with other networks. We can divide up the use cases into three types. We have a fully routable two-way for total network connectivity, but in this case, each subnet must be unique. We can set up one-way source netting based connectors, which can support IP overlap. And more powerfully, we can support a reverse proxy listener, which targets IPs anywhere else in the overlay. This is powerful because these can be advertised anywhere in the mesh, regardless of conflicting IP space. I will demonstrate this case now. In this demo scenario, we have a customer edge deployed inside of a private data center and an Amazon's US West 2 region as well. But this could be in any other cloud provider as AWS is only used as an example here. In the data center, there is a resource that is in the 10.2.0.0/24 subnet that needs to talk to a system in US West 2. All right, so that's our source. This is our destination. The problem is that the destination system has an IP of 10.2.0.118, and so instead of sending traffic to its default gateway, this host in this network is going to ARP for 10.2.0.118 as it overlaps with the local subnet. To solve this problem, we have configured a TCP load balancer in the distributed cloud on the data center customer edge to listen at 10.2.0.92 on port 2201 and it will target the destination at 10.2.0.118 going through the customer edge connection on our global network. And it will translate that traffic to 10.2.0.118 going through the AWS networking. Moving to the actual configuration, we're gonna start with a quick tour of the console. In the home landing zone, we have tiles for various distributed cloud services, and also at the bottom, how-to videos on various deployment strategies. In any page of the console, you can open a support ticket immediately by clicking the support tab in the upper right corner. We're gonna navigate to load balancers to see the configuration of the IP overlap scenario. To configure the load balancer, we're going to add TCP load balancer and we give the load balancer a name. You can call this IP overlap 2201. We specify a listening port and then we specify the origin pool or target IP overlap origin by two. The target port is going to be port 22. You can use the same port for the health check. Uh, uh, the key important thing here is that we need to define the IP address of the origin server on a given site. We have lots of options here. 
10.2.0.118. And here is where we can select our site. Uh, I've got this attached to a TTW West, and we will use the outside network of that site for routability. And I can hit apply. And that is it for the origin. Apply to move back to the load balancer. And then I have to determine where this gets advertised. I can advertise this anywhere in the global mesh. And what I'm going to do is pick the inside network of my local site, which is uh, the KVM site, the advertisement. We want to make sure if we want to specify a particular IP that we check the advanced field tab and that allows us to define an additional IP. That is it. So now, my local data center, I can test connectivity. And we see here, uh, again, that the IP address is in the 10.2.0 subnet. And what I want to do is connect to 10.2.0.92 on port 2201. And I'm going to specify my key to access this uh, just so we see it. 10.2.0.92 here. This is the IP of the remote instance. And we should get connectivity here.